All right, welcome to the Fall All Staff. I am on site at the Markland Wiseman Center and I'm in front of our new construction. So it's been going great. We started at the end of uh, March and actually this large expansion, which is 18,000 square feet, is gonna be actually completed by Christmas time. And then it, once that's completed, then we're gonna be able to move the residents from south, the south side of the building, into that section so that we can then renovate the south rooms and then eventually, once those are done, we'll move them back into their rooms and then we'll move the residents from north into the new section permanently. And that's where the residents in May, June time frame, who are currently at the Markland Phillips Center in Bloomingdale, will be moved over here to this new expansion permanently around that time frame. All right, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on inside this building right now. And you get to see a sneak peek because nobody else has been in here before. So this thing's going to be fabulous. Really. It's hard to even describe all the things that are going to be in this new facility, but it's busy. So for now, please enjoy this exclusive inside view of the Markland Wasman Center expansion. And I'll catch up with you somewhere a little calmer inside the existing building. So the connection is going to be made from here into Ginger Lane so that the residents have access to a community for the first time. And this has been really an isolated facility for all these years and now we're actually going to have access. City of Elgin thanked us for uh, bringing this to their attention and couldn't have been more supportive in us doing this and we'll, we'll be doing this in, over the next uh, week or so, putting in that new sidewalk. And then this will also be access for our, the new Wasman 5K run, walk, and roll that we're going to be moving from Bloomingdale to here in 2026. So they'll have access actually to a neighborhood rather than having to go out onto a busy road to uh, get back into a neighborhood. Okay, we're in a little bit of a calmer area of the Markman Wasman Center and the, the beautiful courtyard that uh, we just upgraded just a couple of years ago with uh, donations that uh, made this really a, a very much accessible to our residents, which has been a lot of fun. So I talked about the Phillips Center and the residents moving over here in kind of the May, June timeframe. So what's going to happen to the Phillips Center? Well, the school will remain, the Anne Haskins Center will remain there. And then what we're going to be doing is actually going to be adding another classroom to the school actually in the current administrative building and then we're going to be doing some things in that building to basically give the school some more space that uh, they could greatly utilize and therapy areas that are going to be very nice. So we'll continue to keep the residential area in Phillips Center for another year while we're doing that renovation and then sometime in 2026 uh, more than likely we'll be tearing down the residential area and then putting in an accessible playground for the school. So that's kind of what's happening and will be happening in Bloomingdale over the next couple of years. All right, so we've just finished up with uh, the listening tour. So thank you for everyone who came. So we actually had um, 61 individuals came in person this year as opposed to 26 last year. And then we had the online survey option as well. So uh, we had about, about 100 staff members either came in person or did the survey. We learned a lot of great things. So kind of the same in these past two years is, uh, you know, what do we relate? It's the well-being and happiness of the people we serve is the number one thing that the staff talks about. Uh, co-workers and the quality of the teams, great people to work with. Uh, the work environment will focus on employment appreciation events that bring staff together and opportunities for growth. Uh, recognition efforts for retention. Facilities are clean. Um, talking about reviewing the ESB policy. And then just, you know, workload management, because we, we have some short staff, is look at how, how do we balance the workload amongst the shifts. So some things that were new this year in 2020, uh, in 2024, 
is uh, the stronger focus on our retention effort. It's just uh, keep retention the center of attention, uh, and we can be successful with the current retention efforts. So there was a lot of positive. I think overall the the tour was very, I thought, very positive, and and the things that were shared by staff, I thought were positive as well. Some things that we really learned some things from, but the uh, the, the the focus on retention effort has been really appreciated by everyone. Uh, communication, uh, good organizational communication, open door policies, uh, connections. They really like the the leadership uh, notes that go out each month to keep everyone informed. So if you're not looking at those leadership notes every month, I hope you are because it tells you a lot of things that are going on in, in the organization. Uh, leadership engagement, support has improved, check-ins, feeling a family within the staff, and that supervisors genuinely care. Uh, need more acknowledgement of long-term employees. And we, you know, 125 out of our 500 staff have been here seven years or longer. So we, I know we've got a lot of long-term employees. And so how, how do we help appreciate you who've uh, been here and carrying the load for so many years? And so we'll be looking at that. And then continue to look at the ESB policy and how can we make that uh, more staff friendly. All right, the DE&I events. Appreciate all the work of the DE&I committee. Uh, you can tell the staff have really enjoyed them. And I just think that it's been a great way to highlight where our staff comes from and just our commitment to uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay, now I'm gonna be sending it to Wendy Burke. She is our HIPAA and compliance officer. And she's gonna be giving you some important information about our abuse and neglect policy. Thanks, Gil. I have some exciting news for everyone, I'm sure. Um, I know it seems like we just did a huge amount of in-servicing on the abuse and neglect policy in the past several months, but October is our usual month that we do our annual in-servicing on the policy. So we will be doing in-servicing on abuse and neglect again in October. Uh, so keep an eye out for an email from me, Wendy Burke, with information on how to do the in-servicing, which includes, as I'm sure you hoped, a quiz. <laughs> Thanks so much. And thank you, Wendy, for that important information. So now everyone is looking forward to the employee appreciation party. That's going to be on November 9th. That's free. And so uh, that you and a, and, a, and, a, and a plus one come to that. And uh, that's where we'll be announcing our Claire Havercamp winner out of our four finalists. And so looking forward to that very much. And then employee appreciation week is that entire next week. So uh, there's gonna be a lot of fun things going on during the entire week. We hope that you've already marked November, that Saturday, November 9th in your calendar. And as always, I have an open door policy. So if you ever have a question or you have something that you'd like uh, just some more information about, um, you know, please feel free to email me, text, uh, give me a call or, uh, and we can meet in person, but I'm always, uh, my door is always open. And I, I hope you'll take advantage of that if uh, you ever uh, find the need. So again, thanks so much for coming to the All Staff and I hope you enjoyed it.